lovelies, I hope you're all well. Today we are going to be making a book holder cushion cover. These are really easy to make, whether you're a beginner with a Cricut machine or you are a beginner sewist, uh, so easy to do. I'm going to be using my maker today, but if you have an Explore machine, you can still do this project. You'll just have to pre-bond your fabric first before you cut it. Equally, you can hand cut your fabric. We are going to be using iron on today, but as I say, if you embroider or you have some other medium, you want to add some applique, then just amend it to your personal taste space and I have got my project all ready to go and I've done this as a Cricut community project so the link for it will be in the description box below and you can just click it and when you come to design space it will look like this the only thing it won't have is the iron-on design that's for you to choose how you want it to be now I've done this as a Cricut project, but if you wanted to make your own pattern, they are so easy to do. So you're going to need four pieces of fabric. So we've got our complete front piece here. We've got two envelope pieces for the back, and then we've got another front piece, which is going to be our book holder. So my cushion is 28 centimeters squared. And I like my cushion covers to be on the tight side. That's just my personal preference. So I make my fabric the exact size of my cushion. So in this case, I've made it 28 centimeters by 28 centimeters. I then do a half inch seam allowance all the way around. I've got my draw lines here and I'm going to be using my Cricut washable fabric pen and these are my seam allowance guides. For my back pieces, I've made them 28 centimeters in width and 19 centimeters in height for both of them. It just gives me a little bit of an overlap and it's the way that I like it. Again, I've got my side and one of my bottom draw lines, which again are my seam allowances. And then I've got two lines on top of each other. These are going to be my fold lines so I can get a nice crisp fold so that my open seam, you're going to be able to see it. It's going to look really nice and neat. And those are just a guideline. For my front book holder piece, I've made it 28 centimeters in width and 16 centimeters in height. Again, I've got my three seam allowance sides and then I've got my two fold lines. You're not going to see the pen. Uh, it does wash out, but it helps me to be able to keep everything nice and neat. It's a really nice and easy, simple pattern to make yourself. I'm obviously doing a smaller cushion today, so I can cut it out on my maker. But if I wanted to do it manually, I'm just going to measure it all out and use a manual rotary cutter. I love my Cricut rotary cutter, but any good rotary cutter will be absolutely fine. The only thing I want to do is I want my two envelope pieces and my front book holder piece to be the same color. So I'm just going to go to color sync and I'm just going to move my front piece to the same layer as my two back pieces. So they will then cut out in the same fabric on the same mat if there is space. If I wanted to put them on a 12 by 24 mat, I can. I'm just going to line them up and then attach them. Today I'm just using a 12 by 12 mat. I've then got my iron on design. So I've used chalkboard font for the name and then for my image, I've gone to my image library. I've searched for unicorn and I've then chosen this image, but of course, Whatever you want to be on your book holder cushion is completely up to you. So I'm completely happy with that. Now if I did want to resize it all, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a box around this one and I'm just going to group it together. And I'm going to bring them all into each other. I'm going to draw a square around. I'm going to go to a line and then I'm going to center, and I can then change the size on them. I don't want to change the size, but I just wanted to show you how you can easily do it. Before we go to make it, I'm just going to ungroup that. Now we've got iron-on layers and we've got fabric layers today, so for all my iron-on layers, I need to make sure that I mirror the images. 
And for my fabric layers, I'm just going to leave them exactly as they are. But you do need to mirror any of your iron-on layers. I'm going to do my fabric layers first. I'm just going to go to popular and I'm going to choose the cotton setting because I am using cotton today. You need to make sure that if you're going to change materials between each matte layer that you come in and you change the cut setting. It's telling us we need to put a black tip pen in. I'm not, I'm just going to use my washable fabric pen. And it's also telling us we need the rotary blade. So we're going to be working with fabric first. We're going to use a pink Cricut fabric mat. And we're going to be using our trusty Cricut fabric brayer. So I've got a big piece of fabric here. So the easiest way I do it is I put it on my mat first. And I then go in with my Cricut manual rotary cutter and I just cut using my mat as a guideline. Now I'm doing it quite gently so that I do not ruin my mat and I'm also doing it so it's on the outer edge of my mat. So I'm not cutting in to my actual sticky part of my mat. Once it's cut I can then come in with my fabric brayer and just make sure that that is nice and adhered to my mat. So I've got my Cricut Maker here. The first thing I need is my fabric pen, which is going to go in my A-clamp. And I just want to gently push it in until it clicks. I've then got my Maker Rotary Blade. I'm going to open up my B-clamp. I'm going to remove the blade that's currently in there. I can then place my Rotary Blade in and close my clamp. So all my fabric pieces are now cut out. I've got my two front pieces and I've got my two back pieces. We can now move on to our iron-on. So as always with iron-on, we're going to use a green standard grip mat. We're going to be using a variety of Cricut iron-on today. So we've got some foil iron-on, we've got holographic iron-on, we've got glitter iron-on and we've also got everyday iron-on as well. For those of you that have never worked with iron-on before, it always has a shiny side and a matte side. As well as mirroring in design space, you always want to make sure that you place your iron-on shiny side down onto your matte. And again, just in case you're not sure, this is the shiny side and this is the matte side. The easiest way to weed my iron on is to actually keep it on the mat. It stops it from moving around and I just find it keeps it really sturdy. You want to use a weeding tool, pull up a small corner piece of your iron on and then just slowly start peeling back. You then want to turn your mat over and gently fold it, you don't want to overbend it, and just peel off your iron-on. So I've got my three envelope pieces here, so I've got my two back envelope pieces and my front piece, and for two of them I've already done my fold lines. I'm going to be using my Easy Press 2 today. I'm going to get my first fold line and I'm just going to fold it over. So I've got my Easy Press 2 and I'm just going to place it on that first fold just for a few seconds at 305 degrees Fahrenheit just to really crease it so when I come to sew it, it's going to be nice and crisp. So that's the first fold done and then I'm just going to fold a second time. Again, I'm just going to really make sure that fold is nice and crisp. So the first thing we want to do in terms of sewing is to sew up each of those fold pieces. So you're just going to do a nice running stitch all the way across as straight and as neat as possible. I always go forward a few steps and then back a few steps just to really reinforce that stitch. So 
So that's the fold piece all stitched up. We're going to do that for the other two pieces as well. So that's all three pieces now done. So we want to take the smaller of the three pieces and place it on top of our front patterned piece. And you'll see that our seam lines meet up. You then want to take one of your back envelope pieces and you want to place it on top of these two pieces so that it is nice side to nice side. You're then going to do the same with this piece and again you want it to be nice side to nice side. We can then pin all the way around here and we are going to sew on our seam lines all the way around in a complete square. When you get to where you need to turn, you want to leave your needle down, but lift your foot up, turn your fabric around, and then place your foot back down. I then like to come in and trim away the excess. We can then change our machine to a zigzag stitch, and we can stitch on the outer edge of that running stitch just to really reinforce it. Turn your cover inside out and you're then ready to add your iron on. So our cushion is all ready to be decorated now. So I've got my Easy Press 2, I've got my Easy Press mat. You always want to preheat your Easy Press mat. This will activate the layers inside. And you also want to heat up your material just for a few seconds just to take away any moisture. If you're unsure of the settings you need for your Easy Press 2, you can go on to the interactive quick reference guide. Absolutely fantastic tool. So you input your base material and you then input your iron on material and it will give you the exact time and temperature you need as well as the usage instructions. So really, really invaluable. It will tell you if you're doing a warm peel or a cool peel. Absolutely fantastic. So my first layer is a foil and I'm going in at 295 degrees Fahrenheit for 30 seconds and I'm just going to apply a light pressure. You want to turn your material over and you then want to press from the back for 15 seconds. Now foil is a cool peel so you want to leave that to cool down. You can fan it to make it cool down quicker. We can then come in and just start slowly peeling away. I'm going to add my first layer of glitter because my foil is now exposed. I'm going to place my Cricut heat protective sheet over and I'm coming in at 340 degrees Fahrenheit for 30 seconds. And you want to press on the back for 15 seconds. And I'm just going to continue to add all my layers on. 